Welcome to Fishing Tutorials. Today's video is all about how to catch carp in winter. We all know what it's like. The temperatures drop, the weeds start to die, the leaves fall off the trees, and all of a sudden you're sat on your sofa watching telly instead of catching carp like we should be. Well, this video is gonna to touch on all of the important aspects of catching carp no matter what the weather, starting with location. Firstly, choose your venue wisely. Day ticket venues with a high stock are ideal, but also don't ignore rivers and canals because the flowing water, the movement to the water tends to keep the fish that little bit more active even through the winter, therefore making them more catchable. The second aspect of location is once you've actually chosen your venue, then breaking down the body of water that you've chosen to fish into areas where the fish are likely to be held up through the winter. So in the past, Alex and I used to believe that finding carp in winter was simply about finding the deepest part of the lake. We were sort of under the illusion that the deep water was more insulated, therefore it was warmer, therefore that would just be where all the carp were when it gets cold. However, over the years we've started to learn that that is not really the case. Instead, the sort of areas where we've consistently found fish in winter are areas which have good cover for the fish to hide in, so undercut banks or fallen trees in the water, big sets of snags or potentially dying weed beds. Those are all places that we've really often found fish in winter. The most important things for the carp are cover more so than just depth. It can be hard to know where fish are gonna be at any time of year. Carp are like any other wild animals, they are unpredictable. You can't get inside their head and know what they're thinking. However, there is one rule that is certainly the case across everywhere we've ever fished, and that is that when the water gets cold, the carp shoal up. In the warmer weather, you'll often find a few carp dotted around here, here and there and everywhere. There might be some on the surface, there might be some at the other end of the lake, there might be some in the deep, in the shallow, they're all spread out everywhere, all looking for food. But when it comes to winter, especially if the water goes clearer, the fish will all seem to sort of gravitate towards one particular area, or they'll just huddle all together and you'll find the fish tightly grouped together. Because of this shoaling behavior that tends to happen in the winter, Location and finding that shoal is of utmost importance. You might just see one carp stick its head out and slosh back into the water, or you might just see one little patch of bubbles, but if you find one carp, you'll almost certainly find many carp. And if you can locate where those fish are on a winter session, then you're halfway there to having a great day. Next up is bait. If you've ever kept pet fish like koi carp or goldfish in a pond outside, then you'll know Come winter, they barely feed. You can sometimes tempt your pet fish to eat a bit of food if you manage to drop it in right in front of it uh, and the food just falls down in front of its face. It, it, you know, it might suddenly just go and have a little mouthful, but the difference between summer and winter is huge. In the summer, you're chucking some uh, pond pellets on the surface and then all just come up and feed on the top. But in winter, you're gonna, ha you're gonna find it a lot more difficult to tempt those fish into feeding. Because fish are cold-blooded, they don't generate their own heat, therefore their metabolism slows right down in the winter, making it a lot easier for you to overfeed the fish that are in your swim. When it comes to fishing, this makes little and often feeding far more rewarding than just chucking in uh, a couple of kilos of boilies and waiting for the fish to come in and mop it up. By little and often, I mean a spawn of maggots and corn every hour, or if you're fishing close in, just a little handful of bait every half an hour or so throughout the session. Little pinches of bait, small handfuls trickling in to the swim means you're less likely to overfeed the fish and fill them up before you get yourself a bite. You must remember though that feeding is very subjective. It depends on the body of water that you're fishing. On some very high stock venues in the middle of winter, you can find people putting in kilos of bait spread out throughout the session and still catching numbers of fish, whereas on places with a really low stock of carp, it's not gonna be uh, beneficial for you to feed heavily. When it comes to actually choosing what bait to use in winter, we tend to lean towards baits that won't fill the fish up too much and tend to be broken up into small particles, meaning those fish can feed for a prolonged period of time without filling up their bellies and losing interest. So what I mean by that is, in the summer you can get away with a big handful of 
uh, halibut pellets or loads of 20 mil boilies, those baits won't really fill the fish up so much in the summer as their metabolism is so high, so fast. They'll eat it all up and they'll put it all out within no time. But in the winter, that sort of high oil, um, lots of protein, those baits will fill the fish up and they'll probably just sit there on the bottom for weeks at a time, uh, not needing to feed afterwards. So what we tend to go for is maggots, corn. If we're using boilies, we'll tend to liquidize them or crumb them up. So we'll either use the crusher to make little crumbs or we'll put them in a liquidizer to make almost a, a boily dust. There is a lot of attraction, a lot of flavor, a lot of taste in the water, but it's not a lot of actual sustenance. It's not, it's not gonna fill them up so much. And by using those sort of small particle baits and feeding them little and often, the fish don't get filled up and you can keep them feeding in your swim for longer. Another alternative to feeding little and often, particularly when the fishing gets really tough and the fish just aren't very hungry, is to use single hook baits. So if you use a bright pop-up or a little ball of maggots or something, and you cast it just at showing fish, you see a few bubbles, you just flick a single hook bait out there. The only bait in the water is your hook bait. Meaning if the fish are coming along and they notice it, it gives you quite a high chance of a bite. Single hook baits don't always work, but you will sometimes find when it gets really, really cold, a single hook bait is your best bet. Another alternative, if you prefer not to just fish one bait in the middle of the lake, single hook bait style, if that, if that doesn't fill you with confidence, then try uh, small PVA bags. A little PVA bag of maggots can really work well in winter, as can a small bag of crumbed up boilies. Rigs. Because when it's cold, we aren't feeding so much, we like to use quite high attract, high vis hook baits to make it more likely that the fish notice them. The sort of baits that we'll use in the winter are 10, 12, and sometimes 15 mil high vis pop-ups like these ones. With a hook bait like this, we like to use a pop-up rig or sometimes a chod rig. We have videos on our channel to help you tie a chod rig or simple pop-up rig. Feel free to check them out. We've placed links in the description of this video to those demos so you can learn how to tie the chod and the pop-up rig. The chod rig has the benefit of rarely tangling and also presents perfectly over almost any lake bed. This makes it the perfect rig for exploring the water in front of you. What I mean by that is that in the winter, as we've discussed, the fish are often very tightly shoaled up and if you locate them, then your chances of catching go through the roof. You can also improve your chances of catching more than one fish in a session if you locate where the shoal is. So in the winter, we'll often use a chod rig on all three of our rods, and two rods if, we, if it's a two rod limit, and we will cast around the swim, just trying to locate where those fish are shoaled up. The chod rig's perfect because you can cast it almost anywhere. The lead might plunge down into seal or weeds, but the hook bait, the buoyant pop-up, will settle down on top of it and fish perfectly. This means you can make a cast, leave it out there for half an hour. If you don't feel like there's any fish in the area, whip it in and cast it a little bit somewhere different. Just keep exploring. And if you see fish crashing or jumping or bubbling, ping your rods in that direction and you're already presented. So the chod rig is great for exploring areas of the lake that you haven't really fished before, areas that you don't know what the, the bottom is like. However, if you're on a lake that you know quite well and you've learned like the clear areas, the gaps in the weed, the silty gullies, you kind of know what you're fishing over then an alternative to the chod rig would just be the simple pop-up rig. The benefit of a simple pop-up rig is you can set it to any length you like. So if you're fishing over a really firm lake bed, if it's gravel or clay, let's say, you can really shorten that hook, hook length up nice and short, meaning the fish come into contact with the lead sooner, making you more likely to hook the fish. Uh, it also gives you the ability to thread on a PVA bag or just hook a, a you know a little mesh bag of maggot or boily crumb onto the hook. Casting that out gives you a little patch of attraction around your hook bait. Those two presentations are ways of fishing a little pop-up an inch or so off the deck. Great for fishing near the bottom when the fish are in that area. But just because it's winter doesn't mean the fish are all going to be sat on the bottom looking for food down there. When it gets really cold you'll often find fish suspended at different sort of layers in the water. It kind of depends a lot on wind direction, how warm or cold it's been in the prior weeks leading up to the session, and of course the depth of the lake. But it's not always true that the carp will be sat 
near the bottom. And when they're suspended off the bottom, you might see them cruising around or you might just be getting no bites on the bottom. So it starts to sort of give you the, um, give you the, uh, the idea that they might be suspended off the deck. Well, when that's the case, the only rig to try then is the zig. So if you observe fish cruising around just beneath the surface, then definitely you want to get a zig tied up. But also don't ignore those times when you're fishing on the bottom and you, you may have had rods out for hours and hours. You may have done a couple of sessions that have ended on blanks. Well, one reason for those blank sessions could be that the fish just aren't actually on the deck. So give a, a zig a try. You might set it at a couple of feet. You might set it up set it at mid-water or even just beneath the surface, but experiment a little bit with zig rigs and uh, give it a go because it can often unlock lakes which previously you've thought, oh, you just can't get bites from. You put out a zig and you find out that actually the fish were just suspended mid-water and the zig sorted them right out. We like to fish our zig rigs with a 10 mil pop-up or sometimes a piece of foam. Whatever you choose to use as a hook bait, we like to keep it in some dip or some attraction just to give it a bit more scent and pump out a little bit more flavor and smell into the water, giving yourself more chance that those fish will come and investigate. So whether you choose to use your standard pop-up rig, a chod rig, or a zig, there's one thing that we would definitely advise for winter fishing, and that is to incorporate maggots into your hook bait to give them a little bit more movement. Here is a quick and easy way to add maggots to any of your pop-up presentations. Cut a short length of foam and thread it onto your hair rig. Take a sewing needle and some cotton thread. These are from our mum's sewing kit, which she mends clothes with. Thread a few maggots onto the needle and then down onto the cotton. You can get away with just a few maggots, but we tend to use a bigger bunch, particularly when there are lots of small fish around that might steal some of the bait. Once you have your maggots on the thread, tie it off in an overhand knot and then another overhand knot to secure it. Thread the cotton through the eye of your hair rig and use a double overhand knot to tie it on. The foam then pops up against the maggots, lifting them up off the bottom. This means that the maggots can't wriggle under any weeds or silt or tangle your rig up. If however you want to use a chod rig, then instead of threading the foam onto your hair rig, thread the foam onto the cotton before tying the cotton onto the rig ring on your chod. Lastly, for zig rigs, Use a little bit of super glue to stick a couple of maggots onto your foam or pop-up. This extra bit of movement on top of your zig can really make the difference when it's cold. Timing. Carp feeding spells can be short-lived in the winter. We've often found in the winter that the best time to get a bite from a carp is in the late afternoon or early evening, just around dusk. Not entirely sure why this time seems to be more prolific than the rest of the day, but it could have something to do with the sun being on the water throughout the day, the water temperatures rise just a little bit, and the peak in temperatures is just before it then switches to night and gets dark. Also, the drop in light levels can often just make fish feed that bit more confidently, I assume because they can't be spotted by predators and are less spooked. Our last bit of advice for winter carp fishing is based around preparation, being organised, ready for your session, to make the most of your time on the bank. One of the best ways to maximise your time on the bank is to pre-bait your swim in advance. By pre-bait, I don't mean chuck in buckets and buckets of bait and then just leave it and wait for your session. I would advise just baiting up a spot that you know fish visit in the colder weather with just a handful or two each day on the lead up to your session. Now I know not all of you are able to visit the lake or visit the, the canal or river that regularly. It, you might only be able to really get down there on the actual day of your fishing. But if you have the ability to or you live close enough by to the venue, then definitely try and get down there either before or after school, popping in after work. That bait being there on the spot, keeping the fish feeding, keeping them inquisitive and looking for food in that area gives you so much more chance of catching a fish come your actual session. Another point related to preparation and being organized is try and tie up as many rigs as possible before your session. 
try and get as many PVA bags and stuff ready as well because once you're on the bank and it's freezing cold and your hands are going numb, it might be raining, it might even be snowing, you don't want to be messing around with your PVA, you don't want to be rushing the tying of a rig, tying a knot quickly and not checking it because you just want to get the rods out and you're cold. It sounds mad but even spending an evening organising your tackle box, getting rid of all the stuff that you never need, organising the stuff that you do regularly need for your fishing, getting it nice and tidy so that you're ready for any eventuality will definitely help you in the long term put more fish on the bank. Whilst you are preparing for your session, don't forget to take appropriate clothing into account. Now I know I'm going to sound like your mum when I say this, but it can be very cold in winter and it is very important to wrap up. So ensure that you've got sufficient clothing to keep you warm, plenty of layers, because at the end of the day, if you get cold and you come home from your session early, you're not going to catch what you could have. So don't forget proper wellies, thick socks, layering, and don't get cold because else you won't catch anything, apart from maybe you'll catch a cold. So there you have it, our quick guide to keeping the bites coming when the temperatures drop. We hope you've picked up some good information from this video and if you have any questions about anything that I've said throughout this film, stick it in a comment down below and we'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. The same goes for those of you who are watching and you've got things that you've learned about winter fishing that's really helped you, stick them in the comments below as we'd love to hear from you. That's it for now, enjoy your winter carp fishing, we'll see you guys soon, bye.